What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another edition of the NBA Slate Starter Podcast. I'm Eric, joined with my buddy Ryan as we break down Friday's 12-game NBA DFS slate on DraftKings, FanDuel, and Yahoo. Uh, Sadiq Bey confirmed breaking the slate, but I think you guys could expect that. The most popular player on the slate, breaking the slate. Nobody else is playing. Wendell Carter and Cade Cunningham out. I don't really know if I want to talk anything about this showdown slate, even though right now I'm cashing in my main lineup, which is confusing to me because I don't even have Bay in the captain spot. Ryan, how you doing, my dude? Yeah, we'll see. Um, uh, there's still a whole nother quarter left. Cole Anthony, very disappointing, in my honest opinion. Uh, Marvin Bagley, I liked a lot. He's doing just fine. I just think um, just uh, a very interesting slate that we were dealt with. Oh, it'll be fun to uh, see what ends up coming out of it. But Sadiq Bay captain to the promised land. Uh, mm-hmm. If you don't, if you played Franz over Mel, you're doing great. Uh, just how showdown goes. It's just little pivots here and there, and you're doing well. But Mo Wagner is also outperforming Cole Anthony, which I didn't expect. But you know, things happen like that. Yeah, I thought my one point of of uh, leverage, if you should say, I said on Live Before Locked, I was just going to jam Mo Wagner. I have 100% of him in 40-something lineups on DK. He's 47%, whereas his brother Franz, the little brother, is 65. I thought small stuff like that when you're projecting within like two or three can work out in your favor. But you know what? I don't even have Sadiq Bay captain in my main lineup. I, I ended up going uh, Isaiah Stewart because Greg was talking about him on Live Before Lock. Marvin Bagley was the guy that I went on my main FanDuel lineup. But again, do we really need to talk about this game anymore? It's the NCAA tournament time. Congratulations to the Big Blue. Well done. Asserting themselves as the best team in the Big Ten, right? I said heading into the tournament, Michigan can beat anyone in the tournament and lose to anyone in the tournament. And they showed both sides of that in the first half, and then the second half, they were dominant. Man, very disappointing to see Iowa go down the way they did. I mean, full disclosure, in some brackets with weird scoring implications that I was dealt with, I had uh, Iowa in the Final Four, sometimes even winning it all. And uh, very, I mean, it's March Madness for a reason. We saw Georgia State put up a fight for about 30 minutes. And then Gonzaga and Chet Holgram carried uh, carried them kind of a slaughtering down the stretch. But we'll see if, uh, in terms of Kentucky, the Wildcats, if they can uh, – Fold it down. Uh, two seed Kyle, Kentucky team, probably the pop one of my po- most popular teams to win it all in the brackets that I played. Mm-hmm. I'd like them to win uh, win the game just because for my brackets. But man, upsets are fun to watch once your brackets are busted. You root for chaos and you root for those Cinderella stories more times than not. But in the first round is all about that bracket being picture perfect clean. Man, it's red all across the board at this point. Yeah, I, I try to build kind of for the bracket pool that I'm in. The I played the same bracket, though, this year in just about everything because I didn't really have the time to devote to it. I was very focused on college DFS today, played a lot of uh, college basketball DFS. I know a lot of you are as well. Check out Matt Kajewski's projections. My God, they are so, so good. But I mean, this Iowa thing is just so devastating to me. And now UConn's in a dogfight with New Mexico State. They were my other... I could have three Final Four teams out by the time we get done with this podcast because Kentucky was my third one. I have Kentucky, UConn, Iowa that could all be out. My God, I hope you didn't take my picks from yesterday. That would be awful. But you know what? That's also why I'm not a college basketball analyst. Whoa. We good over there? We're not going to get yeah. copy, copyright infringement if you're going to play some Drake or something in the background. No, nah, no, nah, we're good. We're good. Good. <laughs> Hit the like button, subscribe button, notification bell on YouTube if you're watching us there. Leave us a five star review. Hello to the people uh, that are listening to us on Spotify in podcast form, Apple in podcast form. Those five star reviews go a long way for Ryan and I. We would really, really appreciate those. Keep this podcast growing, keep this thing going into next year i think we might be dabbling with some twitter spaces stuff coming up very very soon slate starter might be getting very very introspective i'm excited about such things uh we're going to be doing some chats we might have some live interaction opportunities we're probably never going to be doing youtube uh where we're going to be live uh while we're doing it the way that we do all of our streams i do fifty four thousand of those shows a week i'm not too concerned about extra time chatting it up with chat uh, that's about all I can handle. So leave the com- leave the comments if you really want to interact with Ryan, with myself. But otherwise, uh, for the most part, I think Twitter might be a spot we show up once or twice here coming down the stretch before the playoffs. Maybe I'm breaking news to Ryan. We'll talk about it later. But hey, you ready to get going into this 12-game NBA DFS slate, my dude? Let's do it. 
That's right. Sorry, I said, there you go. Let's do it. Let's ride. I called you, dude. I apologize. I Especially on a day that Michigan wins and South Dakota State loses. And Iowa State's going to lose tomorrow. Let's keep it going. Luca, 11-2 on the top and a guard on DK. DeJounte Murray, 10-6. Him and Shea just went back and forth. Uh, they weren't must-haves because it was a 12-game slate where you could just get up to Luca last time out on Wednesday. Well, I thought it made it easier to play him and Shea together and kind of fit it. That direction ended up being good, but here's the story of the slate. John Morant went through walkthrough today. He's on track to play Friday, so that's one piece to kind of keep in consideration. Trey Young, the next guard at 10-1. He is questionable for this game. Seems like he plays more times than not. We think he's going to be sitting out basically the anti-Jimmy Butler, if you will, which is strange because one is very tiny. And then Shea Gilgis-Alexander, once again, questionable for Friday. Same kind of situation that I had uh, in my mind where I want to either play a lot of Shea or I want to play a lot of the guys that aren't Shea on this OKC team if he's going to sit out. That same thing exists, but I got to talk to you about this guy. James Harden, 9,600. Super slow-paced Dallas spot, but he is 9,600. That is a glaring price tag on DraftKings with triple-double upside. How do you feel about him compared to the 10, uh, the 10K guys? Ooh, it's loaded up top. I mean, 12-game slate. We saw what we were dealt with the last 12-game slate, which was a couple days ago. People just wanted to jam in the studs, and you found the right value piece in, uh, uh, value piece in Torrey Craig. It worked out for you. Um, up top here, 9,600 James Harden with potentially no Embiid. Harden, I think, is already in play. I've been pretty heavy on him pretty much his whole time in Philadelphia. It worked out early on. It's not so much so far, but things can change in a hurry. Luke on the other side has been magnificent. Uh, 11-2 makes a ton of sense. DeJounte Murray, 10-6, continues to just absolutely ball out. I would really like to play DeJounte Murray. He might be my favorite one of the bunch up top, but uh, we'll see how that ends up panning out. I think falling um, in the mid-tier, you get the likes of Van Vliet, 7,600, taking on a Lakers team. I'm uh, all about that. I think also looking at a potential Mike Conley now with no Donovan Mitchell makes a ton of sense. But with no Conley, also Clarkson, 5,800. The guy who I was tempted to play last time out, but I shied away, was Nikhil Alexander-Walker. I think I can go to Nikhil Alexander-Walker in more confidence tomorrow at $3,100. I like going to Naw uh, tomorrow with no Donovan Mitchell against this Clippers team. So I'll take my chances at $3,100 Naw. Uh, I think $3,300 uh, Duncan Robinson has three-point upside in a matchup against Oklahoma City. If Trent Furs were to play, he's 3 k uh, so I've talked about a lot of value guards already who are three, five and lower. So those guys I think will be spread around with the ownership, but other guys who are kind of cheap for their upside, all the guys like Zach Levine, 7,700. We haven't seen him price that low in a minute. I think Jalen Brown, 7,500 against Sacramento makes a ton of sense as well. Yeah, I agree. It's going to be a Utah lead in slate. You get no Donovan Mitchell right from the get-go. You're going to have Jordan Clarkson, Mike Conley, Nikhil Alexander-Walker, all of them at guard are going to be extremely viable as well. There's no Bogdanovich, no house uh, from Utah as well. Uh, the house is broken. Anything else from guard here? Let's keep it moving because we got a 12-game slate. We're going to talk about all of these different situations because, you know, site to site to site, it's going to be obviously very, very different pricing. You're going to land on some different guys, but – a lot of the main situations, uh, as far as like value, stay the same. Over on FanDuel, it's going to be a lot of Clarkson, a lot of Conley, a lot of uh, Nikhil Alexander-Walker as well. I'm with you there. But looking at the expensive guys, little different pricing situation. DeJounte Murray, 10-8 there. He's more expensive than Luka Doncic, which I think is pretty uh, interesting there. 10-6 uh, you're getting for Luka. You obviously have no Kyrie Irving. You could be looking at a lot of the guys from the Brooklyn side. Uh, you, we saw Cam, Th Cam Thomas play no minutes. That was a disaster. But Bruce Brown is there, 6,300 over on FanDuel here as well. Uh, you're going to be talking to Kevin Durant as one of the studs for sure later on. But uh, looking at if uh, there's going to be no Shea Gilgis Alexander against Miami, very difficult matchup. But Trey Mann's 5K. Teo Maladon would start and be 4,200 in that spot. Lots of interesting things over here on FanDuel that you kind of have to maneuver. Different pricing here at the top end. Where are you looking to land most, Ryan? Yeah, FanDuel is a little different here, but similar guys in Utah. 
Jordan Clarkson, 5K, makes a lot of sense. I mean, no Donovan Mitchell. He could be the lead usage guy on this team, but up top, everyone's a little cheaper here. I really like Luka compared to everyone else. James Harden, only $9,500. Yeah, shooting guard, small forward eligibility, so I think he's completely fine to go to. For all those guys compared to guys like Morant, uh, Trey Young, I think that you're getting nice savings off of them, and upside's pretty identical. Devin Booker, I, I still like sub 10K against Chicago. I just feel like a 50 point floor for him is pretty solid as long as there's no Chris Paul. Uh, similar guys down here. If no Jimmy Butler, 5,500. Lowry's okay. Lowry's not been taking many shots even when Butler's out, but 5,500 versus OKC is a pretty feasible price tag. I also think going to Jordan Clarkson, uh, and sorry, Nikhil Alexander Walker here makes a ton of sense. If there's no John Morant, you go right back to Dylan Brooks, $4,800. I think it's pretty rock solid. And Fournier and Dante DiVincenzo, priced identically, is uh, completely fine to go to as some value. Other guys in the little mid-tier, up, up, upper tier, Jalen Brown is great. I think Van, uh, I think Tyrese Halliburton, 8500 versus Houston. I know Brogdon's there as well. I think uh, targeting the Indiana-Houston matchup is uh, going to be a fun one to go to in terms of fantasy perspective. All right. Is that it? All right. Here we go. To Yahoo, we go top end there. Uh, Luca, 57. He's way more expensive. So, again, site to site to site, drastically different. The way you're going to look at Luca, FanDuel going to be very popular. Maybe less so on Yahoo, but 57. People know you have to pay up for nice things, but that's not a lot different than 50 and 49. DeJounte Murray and James Harden, respectively. Looks like FanDuel. Uh, you, know, you know, another good spot. You can go roster James Harden specifically with that small forward eligibility, 9,500. But DraftKings, 9,600 really, really sticks out as well. That could be a fascinating spot to land. Yahoo, keep moving down. CJ McCollum's 39. That seems really cheap for him uh, in this circumstance going up against San Antonio. I feel pretty good about that. Halliburton, you talked about against Houston. Everybody goes nuts against Houston. $33 for him. We're going to be sitting with Fred Van Vliet there against the Lakers. $32 here. I think we could probably, I mean, that that's a little expensive here on this 12-game slate, probably going his direction. But further down the line, you're going to get some value that shows up here, and I don't really know how that pans out. But Trey Mann, $16, because SGA, if he's out, that would be a guy I'd land on quite a bit. I think he's going to be a, a, a decent enough value. And Goran Dragic, they're playing in Brooklyn against Portland. I don't know how you don't like that at $13. Uh, another nice piece of value you could get there if they're really not going to run Cam Thomas out there, which was surprising to me. But they did acquire Cam, uh, uh, Goran Dragic for a reason, and that might be it. Uh, Ryan, what sticks out to you on Yahoo? Yeah, I think you nailed it there. Uh, Goran Dragic looks outstanding. Other guys priced around him are guys like Nikhil Alexander-Walker, Dante DiVincenzo, uh, and Jordan Clarkson up at 19. I like a lot. Up top, a Harden sub 50, DeJounte Murray 50. Both I prefer rather than spending up for Luka. Halliburton only $33. That's awesome. I think that's a fantastic play, as is a $32 Van Vliet. Uh, sub $40 McCollum looks great. All these guys are priced pretty awesome for their matchups that I just rattled off. Uh, I think considering a $13 Lonnie Walker isn't too crazy. Had a nice game winner the other night. Uh, Trent Forrest also $10. We'll have to monitor the guard situation, that backward situation with no Donovan Mitchell. Handful of bodies there, but just targeting the upside. Uh, there is going to be the key. Clarkson seems the safest. Uh, then followed by, it's kind of a coin flip between Forrest and Nikhil Alexander-Walker at this point. Love it, my friend. Also, what I love, when you sign up at our sponsor, Yahoo, because you get one free month of Osmo Plus Platinum, everything we have behind the paywall, our content team, our, our guys working the data behind the scenes, player projections, ownership projections, all the lineup builder stuff, everything you could possibly want to be a great NBA DFS player. And then, MMA, PGA, NCAA, uh, some stuff's going on there right now. You might want to check out the projections. All of that can be yours for just depositing $10 on Yahoo and playing in any paid contest. It is truly as simple as that, and you'll get one month of everything we have here. So stop guessing, start winning. Join us at Osmo, but do it through Yahoo, the best place with the lowest rake in the industry, bar none. Thank you so much to their sponsorship of the NBA Slate Starter Podcast. I'm getting so good at that. Oh, man, it's ridiculous. So good at reading stuff. But also, uh, I didn't read a damn thing because Yahoo is the best place you can go play. I don't think there's even a close second. Um, lowest rate, 12%. So different than 17%. Check them out, please. 
I'll be playing over there tomorrow because again, I like playing where I can make money. LeBron James, 10, seven. That price is starting to come down. He's questionable again here. It's going to be waiting on that news once more here. Um, but I don't know how you don't like that. Uh, it starts at 7.30 p.m. Eastern time, so less of a wait than if it were out here on the West Coast. But if he's going to Canada over there and he's going to – I can't imagine that if he travels, he's not going to be playing. It's LeBron James. They need to win a game or two just to even stay competitive, even though Greg was telling me earlier yesterday and today that the Lakers are pretty much locked into the playing game no matter what they do. So at some point, maybe LeBron gets shut down a little bit, but as it stands right now, he's going for a scoring title, so – there you go. Kevin Durant, 10-5. No Kyrie. That's just a smash against Portland. Blowout concerns be damned. I'm going to play Kevin Durant at 10-5. Jason Tatum's 9,500 against Sacramento. That is an intriguing spot. You've got Julius Randle at home against Washington. That's intriguing. You've got Pascal Siakam, 8,900 against this terrible, no good, very bad Lakers team. I mean, there's a lot of spend-ups here at forward, too, but that's kind of what you expect on a 12-game slate is you get to choose all the guys. How do you like them compared to the guard spend-ups, Ryan? Yeah, I, I do think the guard spend does seem a little bit more appealing right now, but things can definitely change on a 12-gamer. Uh, but looking at LeBron James, yeah, I do think LeBron James is playing for that scoring title, but we'll, we'll see how that ends up actually finishing out. It'd be pretty impressive for him to do it. His whole career has been impressive, but 37 and a scoring title seems like what he wants. Kevin Durant, 10-5 against Portland. Durant's going to could drop 60 in two quarters. Uh, against this Portland team, no questions about it. I like going to KD. We might get him at lower ownership. Jason Tatum now sub 10K. I'm going up right back to him against Sacramento. I also like uh, sub 9K Siakam. Uh, man, uh, it's uh, for in terms of pricing and value, they, these guys may, might be priced better than the guards now that I think about it and look at it more. But uh, it's you know, I have no issues if you want to spend up at either position. The value spent down here is not as appealing as the guard. It's no one really sticks out to me sub 4K at this moment. Trent Forrest is the only guy who has uh, forward eligibility. You can target a Jalen Smith at 5,700, but I don't have much interest in guys sub 4K, honestly. I mean, it's really hard for me to go to confidence in the Washington guys in Hachimura or Denny Abdia, but they're in play just because of their price tag. And Corey Kispert also, one of those Washington guys can certainly get there. I'm not sure which one you can target the Kispert three-point upside. Uh, we've seen Hachimura get weird double-doubles off the bench. Uh, so it's a little difficult, but one of those guys are definitely cheap and they're in play because it's a 12 in slate. We're looking for some value. Look, we all went to uh, Tory Craig last night and Juancho Hernan Gomez and Rudy Gay because people wanted to jam in the studs and it worked out. Uh, but it's something like that's going to have to have to happen again. So we'll see. Who it is? I mean, in uh, Phoenix, we might be pressed with that situation uh, with Jay Crowder questionable again. Tory Craig is up to 4K. We'll see how popular he is if Crowder is ruled out. UConn lost, so that's cool. Ooh, I'm sorry. Two here. Final Four teams gone first day. Uh, Kentucky's in a barn burner here. St. Peter's, St. Peter's, right now is only down six with 323 to go. So they're still they're still trying to make it interesting against Kentucky. I'm, I'm watching this one, but man, the UConn one hurts. Uh, it, it's interesting enough. Both of those teams are got, uh, teams that I had going to the Final Four but didn't have in the national title game. I don't know, but Kentucky and I believe Arizona were the other two. So, like, just screw everything. NCAA. It's almost like brackets are absurd, but whatever. I'm just bummed out. Two fan duel we go top end. Kevin Durant, 11K. A little different. For once, DraftKings, a better spot to roster Kevin Durant um, than, than fan duel. LeBron, 10-9 there. Also uh, a little bit more expensive we're looking at there. But 3,500, different floor. Jason Tatum, though, 9,600 against Sacramento. That's intriguing. James Harden is there, 9,500. At power forward, you get Pascal Siakam, 9,500 as well. Bam, 9K against OKC. I never really seem to land on him on FanDuel. Uh, it's kind of fascinating here, but uh, we got to at least think about it with Glass, uh, Mr. Uh, Jimmy Butler here, who our friend Greg Ehrenberg really doesn't think is that tough of a dude. He's questionable once again here for tonight or for tomorrow night when you guys are listening to this for, for Friday. Uh, looking at Jimmy Butler, I, I don't know if he plays or not here, but 8,300, I would have interest if he does give it a go. 
Uh, but looking further down the line, Josh Hart's up to 7,800 on, on FanDuel. That's a lot different than the 6,500 that we were looking at just a week ago. Keldon Johnson's up to 7,300. My God, he's been playing out of his mind, but I can't do that. But Darius Baisley and Robert Williams, I, I got to say, one of the more tilting things I've had in a long time was I had a lot of Robert Williams plot, uh, pro- props. Excuse me. He only played 23 minutes against Golden State because they started blowing him out with Peyton Pritchard. Peyton Pritchard went nuts against Golden State. And as a result, I didn't get extra run for Robert Williams. But what that means is that you get a front court of Demonis Sabonis and Trey Lyles. Robert Williams, 6,500, is going to be one of my favorite forwards to roster on FanDuel. Stocks worth three on FanDuel. Ryan, are you with me? I think so. I think that's uh, that's uh, an awesome uh, play to go to. In that matchup against Sacramento, should be a fun one to target Robert Williams. I have no issues uh, playing him at all. So I think he's uh, great to go to. Uh, other spend-up forwards, I mean, we've touched on KD, LeBron. Those guys make a ton of sense. Uh, to spend up for, as is Harden. Uh, Siakam, t- uh, 9500 is expensive. I'd rather find an extra 100 and go to Tatum. Yeah, Robert Williams is outstanding. I, I think he'll be very popular as well. Uh, makes for an awesome play. Kyle Kuzma is only 7K now. That's too cheap for Kuz. I'll, I would like to go to him in a significant fashion. Other guys who are priced all pretty well, I think RJ Barrett and Jalen Brown. Dylan Brooks, Will Barton look great, as does a, um, I think going to a, uh, what's his name? 8,100 Sabonis is not, uh, it's not bad his at all. His name, that's what it is. <laughs> I was uh, looking around. Yeah, I think $8,100 Sabonis looks pretty outstanding. The Knicks guys, Knicks-Washington team, seem, Knicks-Washington matchup, seems like solid value to go to on FanDuel. I think a couple of those guys where their price in that matchup seems pretty uh, exciting to target. Drew Eubanks, 5,300. He's going to be somebody that I think a lot of people will still land on at that number, probably still too cheap. He's on his 48th 10-day contract, it feels like, in Portland. It feels like he's been there forever, which is weird because he was with the Spurs like a month ago, but, you know, such is life. I uh, don't really want to go and try to make trail aisles or anything down there cheap. I think we've got enough value. We've kind of identified it. I guess the one guy, if you wanted to try to make it a thing, Dwight Powell, 4K against Philadelphia. He's going to be off the floor or on the floor a lot. So long as he keeps his hands to himself against Joel Embiid. Played 29 minutes against Brooklyn, 25.2. I think he's a decent enough source of value. Uh, seems like they're giving him a little bit more of the run against certain bigs. Uh, you do get... Uh, Mr. Maxi Kleba down there, but he's just not very good. Uh, let's go to uh, Yahoo, our sponsor. LeBron James, 53. Kevin Durant, 52. Jason Tatum, 45. DeRozan, 43. These are all over overpriced. I, I find it easier to get to them on FanDuel than what I do over on Yahoo comparatively. Um, but Jaron Jackson Jr., $25. I like him on FanDuel as well, where you get three for those stocks. But $25 sticks out for me here. I'm assuming you're going to get uh, John Morant playing tomorrow. That's what it sounds like. So uh, I don't think really Dylan Brooks 24, but Jaron Jackson Jr. I think still pretty uh, un... I'm not worried about him, should I say. I think the upside still exists. We get further down there, Torrey Craig, $15. I think he'll be popular so long as he's starting here uh, right out of the gate. Jackson Hayes is always uh, really, really cheap over on Yahoo, $14. We could be looking at him starting there and being set to go. Uh, but Royce O'Neal, twelve dollars. That's one guy I haven't said the name of, mainly because he hasn't been cheap enough on some of these sites. He's forty six hundred and such. Uh, I know over on FanDuel, but at twelve dollars, I think he's a fantastic source of value for Yahoo. Ryan, what sticks out to you on our sponsor site? Yeah, I mean, just taking a look over here. It's twelve games, so we've got to spend on summer to jam in those loaded studs. So, uh, like you said, Royce O'Neal looks great. Utah's going to be a t- team to target with no Donovan Mitchell. And uh, no Bogdanovich, so that uh, definitely seems the place to go. And it's gonna he's gonna be popular, weirdly popular. Royce O'Neal is a pretty steady player. Uh, Twelve dollars is fine to go to. I think uh, fourteen dollars Jackson Hayes is pretty appealing. If there were some news to break in the clip uh, in the Lakers, I think uh, going to a uh, eleven dollar Tal- Talon Horton Tucker uh, is pretty awesome. I think. Looking at Rui Hachimura or Aaron Wiggins uh, for other value options is okay, but we need to just save down somewhere. 
And at forward position, sometimes is a place that, where it could work out. All these guys are priced pretty appropriately in LeBron, KD, um, Jason Tatum even. I think those guys are priced appropriately. I like targeting the tier with Kuzma, uh, Jimmy Butler if he plays. Uh, I think those guys look pretty outstanding. RJ Barrett's in that price price range as well. He's been pretty rock solid of late. I've been pretty uh, aggressive on Marcus Morris Sr. It's been worked out over the last week. I don't mind it uh, going to him yet again um, at that price tag. But spending down seems the way to go. It's kind of gross at the bottom, but I think forward, uh, you might need to spend down a little bit uh, just to get some um, flexibility elsewhere. Holy mother of God. St. Peter's just tied it up with Kentucky. 71-71 with 21.6 seconds left to go. I'm watching live. Are you watching this? No, I'm doing our Kentucky's job. Kentucky's going to take a last shot. You're what? I'm doing our job. 10, 9, 8. All right, here you go. Kentucky. I'm doing my play-by-play. Play. Going left. Wide open. Nope. Air ball. All right. Overtime. St. Peter's in Kentucky. I'm just curious because I'm cheering for St. Peter's now. I've lost two Final Four teams. What is three? I don't really care. Let's go to center on DraftKings. Yeah, I'm doing our job. I'm Ryan. I'm mean. Also, my friend, happy St. Patrick's Day. There you are. Cheers. To whoever thinks, oh, Eric's drinking online before long. <laughs> I never am. But on Slate Starter, I think it's fair game. It's freaking infinity o'clock on St. Patty's Day. We can do it, my friend. Let's head to the center position on DraftKings. Jokic, 11-5. Big piece of news. Joel Embiid questionable. He ended up playing last time out. Ended up being a nothingness. Same thing with LeBron James. Uh, I think they both probably play. Joel Embiid, I don't think he's trying to duck Dwight Powell. He didn't duck Nikola Jokic. So uh, Jokic and Embiid, the eternal question we have on every single slate. Sabonis is now 8,700. Jonas Valanciunas with Siege of a Column, 8,400 back. I can't get there. Bam at a bio against OKC, 8,300. Oh, I might have some interest there. But 7,400, Rudy Gobert, in the absence of a lot of guys, he should have to play a lot of minutes. Ended up being the center that was in most winning lineups the other night because he's just a little too cheap. I don't think people really rationalize. 7,400 for Rudy Gobert is cheap, cheap, cheap. And I know he's got a serviceable uh, Hassan Whiteside who goes in and plays 15 minutes a game behind him. But in 33, 34 minutes, Rudy Gobert, I don't know how you don't love 7,400 for him on a slate where we have a lot of guards and forwards we want to pay up for, uh, Kevin Durant for me on DK. But uh, who sticks out to you for the center position that isn't just Jokic and Embiid? And do you have a preference between the two like I always do because it's Jokic? Um, at this type of matchup, uh, since Embiid is questionable, I just think, yeah, Jokic continues to have a higher upside. Uh, just because with Harden being in the picture, I'm going a, I'm to a, I'm a roll with Jokic. Uh, he just continues to play amazing basketball. LeBron James is in out of the picture at 10-7 center eligibility there. But I do love Rudy Gobert at $7,400. If there is no Jimmy Butler, Bam Adebayo looks outstanding at 8300 As does, um, uh, I think we can continue to ride an $8,400 Valanchunas. There's um, limited uh, bodies there, but CJ McCollum is back. It's just him and CJ show right now. I don't mind him at 8,400. He'll be very low owned. I do think there's going to be some value on the bottom uh, tier if you want to target uh, an Andre Drummond at 5,400. I'm not sure what the Indiana front, uh, front court is going to look like with Goga potentially returning, but he's only $3,400. It seems a little too thin for a 12-game slate. Uh, Claxton's not out of the picture at uh, 3,400 3, against Portland just because there's ways he can get there. He might get a lot of run uh, if this team is clapping Portland as they should. This team is what, Portland? Sorry? What did you say to Portland? Did you say oh, clapping? Said, yeah, clapping like, you know, just like. Taking the town. royal crap out of. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what the kids say now. All right. Clapping. I've never heard that before. <laughs> um, Looking at $7,300 Christian Wood against Indy looks pretty awesome as well. Not sure how much ownership will fall on him. Him and Gobert both look outstanding uh, over there on DraftKings. 
as Eric watches right. the end of the uh, Kentucky game. I can't onto Fanduel. Okay, so <laughs> so let's also throw this into the fray. Devontae Adams is heading to the Las Vegas Raiders. What planet am I on right now? The planet that Sadiq Bay is about to drop fitty a fitty piece. Yeah, because he's playing the Magic, and the Magic suck, and so does everybody else on his team. And he's actually like, he's one of three actual rotational pieces that is playing in this game. Because like Cade Cunningham and Jalen Suggs are decent, and Wendell Carter Jr. is good, but like legitimately, there's like three guys that are NBA caliber players playing in this NBA game. Corey Joseph's been on an NBA rotation for about a Oh, my years. God. If Corey Joseph is the defense mechanism you have for this, we're going to center on FanDuel. Yeah, we'll do our jobs, my friend. Yo, get you 11-2. Joel Embiid, 11-1. Uh, very negligible difference. That means Jokic is going to always be my priority. Both in slow-paced, tougher matchups, but I definitely like the Jokic spot here for that. Uh, we've got Bam, 9K. I talked about him already. Power forward center eligibility for all these guys. And then it becomes Jonas Valanciunas at 8K. You've got an opportunity of Ru- Rudy Gobert, 7,800. Eight and against Chicago, 7,700. I know it's getting up there, but you've got Vooch cheaper than him, 7,600. That's Bay, what happens when you... Piece. He got there. Just drop it. Oh. He got there. That was the first time you've ever interrupted me. I loved it. Talk to me about center on FanDuel. Do it more. Fan to one center. Uh, 11 to you. Kentucky's up two, by the way. Minute 20 into how, oh, to, overtime. Oh, shit. St. Peter's was about to like start the break, and then Kentucky's absolute stud just stole it and made a bucket to up two. Yeah, continue. Oh, 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 upset brewing. Uh, I oh, think 6,700. Jakob Perta looks outstanding here. Up top, Gobert, 7,800 block specialists. Uh, Robert Williams, 6,500. You can play him at the center spot for sure. Touching around, Andre Drummond, uh, 5,600. Continues to play decent minutes uh, for this Brooklyn team. I'm curious what Brooklyn, if Brooklyn, I need to see Brooklyn's standings a little more in depth. Can they be an eight or seven seed if they get hot down the stretch? I'm not sure, Um, but I need to monitor that. Those implications do kind of matter just to see potential load management in between games. Doc Rivers has already hinted at it. Between Harden and Embiid, we might see those their minutes go from 38 to maybe 32 or 33 down the stretch, which is pretty significant um, down the stretch. So keep an eye on some different coaching uh, speakers, some news reports on what teams are doing that are vying for playoffs or getting ready. Like we've already seen Donovan Mitchell get rested uh, for tomorrow. So things like that is very important to be on top of and. Little edges like that uh, can go a long way in March, April DFS. DeAndre Ayton, 7,700. Uh, he's fine. I think he's pretty solid to target as well. But up top, Gobert, Jokic is great. Uh, Bam Adebayo is in play even at 9K for this team. But in the mid-tier, Williams and Pardo look outstanding. Yep. Mid-tier looks gigantically important. I mean, every position is going to have value just about everywhere. It's just a question of how good it is. Center, generally, the value looks even better because of the double-double bonus over on DK. And then on FanDuel, you get some opportunity to pay up and get multiple studs into your lineups with a still very high upside guy alongside them there at center. To Yahoo we go, where you can play two again. Jokic, 56, and beat 54. Gets a little bit interesting after that because Demonis Sabonis is 36. We're talking an $18 difference between the top-end guys and the next grouping of dudes. That makes them very, very appealing to me. You got Porzingis center only. Uh, again, center, uh, a very strict position over on Yahoo. They're $30. Mitchell Robinson against Washington, 24 I mean, they're upside guys. $20 Andre Drummond. I don't know how you get away from that. But, I mean, Indiana and Houston is such an incredible game environment. It's sad that I don't think we can get to a whole lot of Shangun unless he were to just miraculously be starting there. But a $28 Christian Wood is very very appealing to me to try to make thing make a thing in large field tournaments ryan who are some of your favorite targets to round it out on our sponsor site yeah looking at our sponsor site yahoo it's tough for me to spend up in confidence here because there's a the way there's price on savings guys like siakam gobert especially siakam 35 dollars. i love it's crazy a lot uh i think gobert is outstanding even lower we can go to guys like even 
Robert Williams at $27. Andre Drummond is $20. I think these guys are all outstanding. Keep an eye on the Houston situation. I don't mind going to Christian Wood up at 28. I think that's pretty solid for the uh, matchup against Indy. Um, I would really, I don't think there's a much of a reason to spend all the way down. The cheapest I'd be willing to be even take a shot and not with all that much confidence might be Drew Eubanks or I might even cut the line at Drummond, honestly, just because the upside of those guys ahead of him seem well worth it than trying to uh, target an upside with anyone below him. That's how I feel about that center slate on Yahoo. Love it. Well done. Ryan did his job today. I watched St. Peter's in Kentucky. 75-75, 205 left to go. We got to get out of here. We got to watch the end of this thing together, my friend. Uh, we'll stay in the room and, and chill, hang out. Happy weekend to everybody. Enjoy your weekend. Enjoy the NCAA tournament and enjoy a 12-game NBA DFS slate tomorrow. Yes, Michigan plays Saturday. Way to go. Iowa State plays tomorrow on Friday. It's not going to be pretty. Duke plays Friday. I think they'll be okay, but then they won't be after that. Any final words for the people, you modest individual, you? Go Blue. Go Blue. Uh, Five-star reviews would be fantastic. Uh, I'd really appreciate that, as would Eric. Those do go a long way. Maybe this gets carried over into the postseason if we get enough five-star reviews. We'll see. Uh, but that's your call. That's the audience's call. So uh, we'll see how that ends up going. Uh, but thanks so much for yet again tuning in for another week of the Slate Starter. Have a great weekend. We'll catch you on Monday. He's Ryan. He had a good day. I'm Eric. I am very, very sad about my bracket. I, I It's not been good. It's not been good. But guys, we appreciate you. Have a great weekend. See you back here on Monday.